In 1826, on a farm in upstate New York, a slave chose to walk into freedom. Her name, Isabella Bonfrey. And with that, she walked into a journey, an odyssey, a lifelong task that she set for herself to go out, <laughs> to emulate truth, but she decided I apologize. It's been a while since I've been to King's College. I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Breckley Ellard. I'm an alumni of 2008, founder of the House of Truth. Now back to Isabella Bonfrey. She decided to emulate truth, to walk. She set for herself a task. preach freedom to the oppressed and comfort to those who are held captive and sojourn in captivity. Yeah. One day, she said the spirit called her into truth. And so, she decided to change her name. And Isabella Bonfrey became Sojourner Truth. And from that, was born of persona, born of hardship, destined for greatness, native to New York. About 200 years later, in upstate New York, in a cabin, in an unseasonably cold April, two students of the King's College, Kara Williams and Jesse McSwain, joined 28 other students from the King's to set the foundation of what is now the house system. As the cabins grew colder, their fingers froze, their toes turned blue, they were sorted to desperate measures to stay warm because there was no heat and they had no blankets. They put on every piece of clothing they had and then they laid down a mattress and then they settled in between it and laid another mattress on top, uh, essentially creating a mattress sandwich. But they emerged from that victorious over hypothermia and thus was born the House of Sojourner Truth. Born in hardship, destined for greatness, native to New York. Now, the Emancipation Proclamation may have been signed during Sojourner Truth's lifetime, but slavery still persists today. Hundreds of thousands of people are either sex slaves or at risk of sexual exploitation in the United States. Most of them are women. We first developed a heart for the issue of sex trafficking back in the day when Vicar was still a position on our house exec team. In 2006, our first Vicar, Heidi Coben, began to work with the Red Light Children campaign an organization which seeks to decrease the demand for human trafficking and to raise awareness of the issue around the world. Since then, we have followed in Sojourner's footsteps and remained active in the fight against modern-day slavery. In 2007, we began to work with Restore, an organization which helps trafficking victims recover and lead normal lives. We held a huge auction to raise funds, and in 2010, Restore opened a safe house for girls in the city with the help of our contribution. Through education, prayer walks through New York's five boroughs, and documentary showings, we have continued to raise awareness and actively take on the issue of human trafficking. Sojourner Truth's tenacious leadership sparked our desire to declare our intent to live by her example. So, under the guidance of Susan St. Cyr and the House Exec Team of 2007 to 2008, our mission statement was formed. Um, our house hoped to convey the principles of Sojourner Truth that ignited Sojourner Truth's zeal and inspired our founders. She was the living embodiment of unrestrained truth, and our house embraced the philosophy of undiluted truth delivered with grace. It allowed us and her to, to confront a world that was filled with lukewarm convictions with a fiery faith. In the same year, the upperclassmen decided to require the young truthies to internalize that burning passion. Each freshman was given her own box of matches 
At any time, an upperclassman could drop by a freshman's apartment and tell her to strike a match. At one, at any time while the match was lit, the freshman had to recite the mission statement twice before the flame burned her fingers. The house is a journey of truth, strives to empower honorable Christian leaders who emanate grace and truth. We are alive, solid, and passionate. After just seven years of existence, the House of Sojourner Truth has become part of a culture steeped in tradition. Over the years, our, the women of our house have created an array of beautiful and beloved traditions. One tradition the women of our house uphold is that of kissing the crest. It's not as weird as it sounds. <laughs> um, wherever our crest banner may hang in the lineup, whether we're escaping from a long evening at the library or just running to class, each truthy stops before the banner, which so proudly displays our colors, kisses her fingers, and touches them to the Catherine wheel that stands at the heart of our crest. The beautiful crest of the House of Sojourner Truth was created, is nearly as old as the house itself, finalized in the 2006-2007 academic school year under the leadership of Brittany Beckenhauer. Each component is a symbol of what our house really stands for. The rich blue background represents truth in its depth and absoluteness. The gold atop is the color of generosity. The battlements not only bring to mind our beautiful city's famous skyline, but also represent, or also embody licking flames, which represent our passion for life. The phoenix, wings raised, represents the resurrection which Christ promises us. And the centaur to its right brings to mind wisdom as well as eminence in the field. The Red Cross is the mark of fortitude and our unyielding faith in Christ. At the core of our crest is the Catherine Wheel, a mark of St. Catherine, a martyr so holy and pure that upon touching the intended instrument of her death, the wooden wheel broke into pieces. Her sacrifice on behalf of God and willingness to die for her faith embodies everything that we, the House of Truth, stand for, our willingness to live for God and sacrifice everything for him and each other. During the great race of 2006, a truthy by the name of Megan Pierce gave her utmost for the sake of the team. She was striving and driving. She had the eye of the tiger. She passed out. <laughs> while, she may, while some teams may have turned in the towel or taken her to a hospital, Fearless and legendary Truthy, Breckley Ellard, had a different idea, and hospitals were not a part of her bold strategy. <laughs> Breckley hoisted Megan upon her back and carried her across the finish line. While some, um, the purpose of this tale is of strength and sisterhood is not only to pass down a heroic account of Breckley's beastliness, <laughs> it also embodies the type of women that we strive to become. A keystone for Truth Women is our values. They help us to focus our attention on things of importance and act as a guide when we feel lost. During times of trouble, each and every one of us know we can turn to the house for assistance. We value the pursuit of wisdom because, seeking, because making wise decisions is the first step to attaining justice, something Sojourner Truth fought for her entire life. Likewise, our value of restoration follows in line with our namesake struggle to bring people back to their full identity as men and women who can abide in Christ. Color recognizes each of our strengths and weaknesses and sees them not as hindrances, but as opportunities for growth. Wherever one of us is lacking, another steps in out of sisterly love and lends a helping hand. This leads me to the final value, sisterhood. This value is a goal as well as a promise. Like family, we will love and stand by each other through all of life's joys and struggles. The House of Sojourner Truth has come a long way from its founding seven years ago. Our pursuit of the four values, our adherence to the symbols on the crest, our mission to empower Christian leaders, all of these are done with the intent of going out and engaging the world at large. And from our humble origins in the wilderness of upstate New York to the crest that hangs in the Empire State Building, to wherever God takes us in these coming years, we will forever remain women of truth.